Today we are sailing to Ilhéus, this Brazilian town with so much history. I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. And after two years bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life, it's finally time to start exploring. So don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Sunday for a new episode. Time to move again. Morning. Good morning. It's time to explore new places. We also love this place, but you know, sometimes the wind calls us. In the wind. Oh, it's starting to do. We are waiting for the pilot to come, but we are not going alone. We are in five boats together, going to the same place. What I mean by pilot in this case is the person that knows the narrow passage between the sandbank and the coral reef, as the sandbank is always moving. So we have a sandbank here and coral reef here. With the high tide, we can't see really well the coral reef. So we need to be careful. The sandbank is okay for our boat as we have one meter drive. Where the first boat is right now, the pilot, is the worst part of this bar. I think we passed the, wor the worst part. We passed like the reef is right here is still, but I think we are, we are all. Yay! Always, always nerve wracking to pass by. You know, shallow, channel, narrow. Mm -hmm. And when we came, we came on the low tide, so we could see the reef is really close. Like this seems, I don't know, it's not that close. It is, it's like a couple meters. And we have a rainbow on the back. Yay. And just like that, we are out. Ready for Ileus. It's gonna be like 20 hours trip, so we are gonna arrive there during the night. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. There are way too many whales in this region. That's exactly where the boat that we've been talking about sank. It was like 20 miles from our destination. So we're like, we're we are just trying not to sail during the night as much because the whales, it's hard to spot them during the night. So sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. That's why we are leaving five in the morning. Valeu, carinho. Obrigado. Abraço. Bom dia. Valeu. Before we start this passage, I just want to thank the sponsor for this video, Athletic Greens. As you guys know, our videos are usually two months behind real time, and right now we are in the last part in Brazil, getting ready to cross the Caribbean. And that means a lot of work, and also means we need to take care of our health. And for this, I started drinking AG1 regularly, and it became part of my morning routine. What I like about AG1 is that it's more than just a greens powder. One scoop of age one has 75 minerals, vitamins, and whole food source ingredients. It's a nutritional drink that simplifies my health routine as it's quick and easy to prepare. The best part is it tastes good. Getting the boat ready for a big crossing can be exhausting. And drinking age one is helping to support my immunity, boost my energy, and also I feel like I can recover quicker on the next day to keep working. So get a special deal and support us at the same time. Go to athleticgreens.com slash adlifecrafting to start on your order. Athletic Greens is going to give to our community a free one year supply of immunity system vitamin D3 plus K2 and also five travel packs with your first purchase. Now, time to go sailing. I don't know where I've been. I don't know where I'm going. Been holding on to the past, but this life keeps on moving. Don't you worry about me. I'm the little so The good thing about arriving in a new place during the night is that it's news for you in the morning. I have no idea what what this looks like. Oh, you didn't see it? No, I didn't it's see it. It's a surprise. Yeah. Oh, it's actually bigger than I thought. And the cool thing is when you arrive in a place during the night and you wake up and you look to the next boat, 
you didn't know the guys. <laughs> Red Boat, we met them in the boatyard when, like, I, I think like two years ago, I already messaged them. I, I'm pretty sure they're here or they left the boat here because they arrived here like a week and a half ago, maybe. I believe they're on the boat, so I'm waiting for them to answer because we need to go explore town today, of course. But the bad thing about arriving in a place during the night is that you can't see well other boats or if there is a mooring around, so we are gonna anchor again. Yeah, because of course to make sure it was safe, we just anchor as far as we could and now we were like, you oh, know, we can get closer to, there is a yacht club where can, we can leave the dinghy, so we're gonna leave the boat closer so it's safer, you know, more people looking at the boat. So the other boats that are with us, they have a schedule to arrive in Recife and we don't have it. So we're gonna spend like at least like five days here, I guess. They're gonna leave tomorrow, I believe. I'm not sure, but I believe they're gonna leave tomorrow. We're gonna stay here until we decide where we want to go next because <laughs> we might want to go to a place that we need to have a good condition in order to enter the channel because there are breaking waves both sides and it's like really, really, this is the most tricky one to enter. And we don't want to have a big swell to do that. We need to have a small swell. So we might wait for here, here until the right day we can go explore. Here we are, new anchorage. Let's go. <laughs> Time to go. Isn't this our friend's uncle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, but we record a podcast after like a year ago or so. And the guy that is the one of the guys on, from the podcast that interview us, that's his uncle. He's a really, really <laughs> famous guy in Brazil for lit literature. So he wrote a lot of books. And, and he, novels. And novels. And he, he is a statue of my friend's uncle. So this is Jorge Amado. He wrote a lot of novels and most of them are based on this city. Like Gabriela, Chieta and a lot of a lot of novels and we are gonna have lunch on this place that was one of his inspirations <laughs> Arriving in one of the most famous cabarets in Brazil. It used to be a cabaret in the beginning of the 90s and now it's a place to visit. It's not a cabaret anymore? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sejam bem-vindos por ser um dos bairros que a gente está. 1920 a 36, eu era frequentado por coronéis aqui. Mantinha a porta da frente fechada. Mantinha um armazém lá com o nome Secos e Molhados. Eles tinham acesso secreto pelos fundos. Esse aqui era o conhecido como Beco das Frutas. Hoje é barcozinho e colete. Lá em cima ainda temos um quarto funcionando. Tá vendo vocês? Mas é para visitação. <risos> <risos> então os coronéis deixavam as esposas no final de semana na igreja lá, ó, rezando. E falavam para ela que estariam tratando de negócio no Vesu. Passavam pela cozinha do Vesu, tinham acesso aos quintais das casas e chegavam nesse beco. O tempo era curto demais, foram até a igreja, jogaram um saco de dinheiro na mesa do bispo e falaram para prolongar a missa. E a missa foi prolongada de uma hora para <risos> seis horas. Meu Deus! Os coronéis da época só gostavam das quengas importadas e a maioria eram francesas, polonesas, holandesas e suíças. <música> 
but the club was open as a house of prostitution, cabaret and casino at the same time. This used to be the room of the owner of the place, and today it's a museum full of history. What's happening? Ice cream time, I mean milkshake time. <laughs> this, how old is this ice cream place? Since... That means 70 years old. That must be good. <laughs> Next step, my friend's house. This is the house Jorge Amado lived with his family in Ilhéus for a while. Jorge Amado was one of the most famous Brazilian writers of all time. His works are based on a realistic exposition of scenarios in Bahia, and they were translated in more than 30 languages. The author was also involved in the political scene in Brazil. One of his famous quotes is I still firmly think about changing the world, and I think that literature has a great importance. Well, unfortunately, we needed to cut this trip to Ilhéus short. Yeah, the thing is, we really, really wanted to go to this place called Itacaré after Ilhéus, and in order to get there, as we mentioned already, we needed a small swell. With a big swell, it's just impossible to get in because there are just breaking waves. The swell was going to pick it up on the next couple of days, so we decided it's time to go. But the sad thing is, we really wanted to visit our friend's boat. We mentioned already 1,000 times the boat that hit supposedly a whale and that sunk. At this point, the boat was actually right next to our boat on the port. But that was the day that the port was closed and they didn't allow us inside and we really wanted to film that in order to try to help them out because right now they're trying to put this boat back together. So it would be a really cool thing to tell the story and to try to raise money for them. I'm not sure how people from outside of Brazil can help, but if you're in Brazil and you want to support them, there is a link on the description of this video. You just click there and you can support them to try to put their house back together. Right now they're already floating the boat, but they have so much to do before they can actually start cruising again. So help them out. And before we go, there is one more thing. We want to welcome Steven to our Patreon family. Welcome. <laughs> See you guys next week. See you.